Hi there and welcome to lesson 2 in our B5 topic where we are looking at under the microscope. Now today we're going to be following on from last lesson where we looked at microbes and we're going to be focusing on the effects of those microbes on people. So we're going to be looking at pathogens. So here are our objectives for today. Okay, so by the end of this lesson on pathogens, you should know and understand uh, how microbes can spread infectious diseases. Now, pathogens can be spread through a number of different ways. The first is as an airborne microbe. The second is via contaminated food entering the mouth. The third is injected via an insect needle or from an open wound. And then the fourth is from one person to another via sex. So be careful on that one. Now, in, uh, the pathogens need a period of time before they will actually take effect. And this is known as the incubation period. And it's not necessarily a pathogen that causes the problem. What they can do is they can actually produce toxins which are released into the body and those chemicals can then cause the problem. Now here are a list of common diseases that you have probably heard of. Okay, So we've got uh, cholera or food poisoning. Now these are caused by bacteria. Now, cholera can come from contaminated water, whereas food poisoning obviously comes from contaminated food. Now, diseases such as influenza or flu and chickenpox are a virus. Now, these can be caught from uh, airborne droplets. So if somebody coughs or sneezes, that's how you get influenza. Or chickenpox, you get as a direct contact. And then a fungal infection that you might have is athlete's foot. And these can come in, or you can get via contact. Now, one of the big ways in which diseases can be spread is during natural disasters, such as earthquakes, hurricanes, or erupting volcanoes. Now, these can kill thousands of people. But what can actually happen is that you get a rapid spread of diseases, such as dysentery, cholera and food poisoning. Now the reason why you get these could be one of uh, several. Damage to sewage systems means that drinking water can become contaminated. Electrical supplies mean that refrigeration and freezers stop working so that you can get food poisoning. The energy supplies can also have an impact on being able to cook food properly. Hospitals and medical supplies can be damaged and destroyed, as well as road systems that can be difficult to get emergency services through to the different um, parts where the aid is needed. Now, for this reason, it's really important to make sure that uh, response to natural disasters is quick. The actual disaster kills less people than the uh, infections that can be spread afterwards. Now that means that if you've got somebody, you need to quarantine them very, very quickly uh, to prevent the diseases being spread. Now that can be done by uh, keeping them away from people or making sure that they come, don't come into contact with water or food to stop those um, diseases being spread, meaning that you prevent yourself from coughing, cleaning, and trying to get rid of any uh, equipment that has been in contact with the disease. Now you may be asked to interpret data that looks like this. Now here we've got a negative correlation that shows that as the year from 2000 to 2005 uh, goes on, the number of food poisoning cases in England and Wales decreases. So that negative correlation shows as you go from 2000 to 2005 the number of food poisoning cases goes down. Now you might also suggest what's happened between 2002 and 2003 where there is a slight plateau um, and it might be that there, there's been uh, some changes or, or, or something that you might need to explain with that information. Now obviously the best way to prevent uh, infections and diseases is to use 
uh, a way of actually getting rid of them. Now there are two methods that you can use to get rid of disease. Using antiseptics, which can are chemicals that kill microorganisms on the skin or other surfaces. You've probably got a whole load of these at home in your kitchen. Uh, they can also prevent the spread of uh, diseases during open surgery or food preparation. Now the second way is antibiotics and these are drugs that are there to kill bacteria. They don't work against viruses because as the name suggests biotic means or bacterial infection. Now obviously with the development of new super drugs or super bacteria these antibiotics need to be used carefully. So diseases like MRSA, one of the superbugs, has actually developed resistance to an antibiotic known as methicillin. So that means that you can't take that antibiotic if you have MRSA. So it's very important that you make sure that you don't um, take that if you have MRSA. Now cholera is caused by a bacteria called the Vibrio bacteria. Now if you can remove that then you can actually get rid of the cholera. Now food poisoning is caused by Salmonella or E. coli, which are probably things you've heard of, whereas athlete's foot, which is a viral infection, is sorry, a fungal infection is caused by trichophyton. Uh, I think I've had a bit of problems there, so uh, just ignore that that disappearance of stuff. Okay. Now the history of treating disease has come about over the uh, last. 19th, uh, last couple of centuries, 19th and 20th centuries, and that's because more people are, or one of the effects of that is more people are surviving the infections that people can get. Now, the first idea about uh, microbes and treating disease came in the 1860s, and that was Louis Pasteur who had the theory of germs. So, the germ theory. of disease and this explained that microorganisms pass from one person to another and it wasn't the air itself that caused the problem it was microorganisms. Now following on from that a, another scientist called Joseph Lister developed antiseptics. Now he was a surgeon and he noticed that wounds became infected after he was treating them. And what he did was he sprayed something called carbolic acid. And what that did was that removed the chance of infection. And that was the first antiseptic. And that was able to remove any bacteria by killing them. Now the third and final and possibly the most influential one was Alexander Fleming in 1928 and he discovered quite famously penicillin and what he was doing is he was growing uh, bacteria and he noticed that the mold uh, from a sandwich was actually killing some of the bacteria so where the mold was there was no bacteria growing and this was believed to be the first antibiotic first antibiotic developed uh, and that was used to treat bacterial infections so he grew bacteria noticed that the fungus on his sandwich was actually producing a chemical that killed the bacterial cells okay so we have looked at today we've looked at some of the common uh, diseases or pathogens that you might come across and what causes them whether it's a bacterial infection viral infection or whether it is a fungal infection 
Um, so you'll need to know that obviously cholera, food poisoning are bacteria caused by the Vibro and Salmonella and E. coli bacteria. Uh, and then you've got viral infections such as chickenpox and uh, AIDS, HIV, which also come under the viral infections. And then you've got other yeast infections that you might have come across. Um, and you've also got yeast infections such as athlete's foot. Uh, we've also looked at how we treat those with antiseptics and antibiotics and we've also looked at a couple of patterns. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you again later. Take care. Bye-bye.